Hello chemists and welcome to Bale's Chemistry. In this episode we're going to look at pH curves. This is topic 1.12 of the AQA A-level chemistry specification and is on paper one of your final exams. So this is a pH curve. It's created when we track the progress of a neutralization reaction, much like we'd carry out when we do a titration. We continue to record the pH of the solution as we add in the acid or the base during the titration and then we plot a graph of the data. Creating a pH curve is a relatively simple but time consuming process. Equipment is set up in the same way as a titration, starting with a fixed volume of soluble base. Then a small amount of acid is added from a burette, usually one centimetre cubed, although it's good practice to add smaller amounts closer to neutralisation. The pH is then measured using a pH meter. Unlike a normal titration, an indicator isn't used as this only shows when the reaction is complete and doesn't allow us to track the pH throughout the process. The equivalence point is a name given to the point at which all the acid or the base has been neutralised. At this point, small additions of the base cause a big change in pH, and this creates a vertical section on the line, which is shown here in the blue area of the pH curve. This is also the end point of a titration, and is usually made visible by the use of an indicator chemical, which changes colour at certain pHs. There are four combinations of the acid and base pH curve that you need to learn, and we often draw them as adding the base to the acid, although the opposite is obviously possible. In the first example, with a strong acid adding a strong base, the pH starts low around 1 and ends with an excess of base around pH 14. The equivalence point is well defined and occurs at pH 7. In our second example, adding a weak base to a strong acid, the pH again starts lower around 1, and with an excess of base it only goes up as high as around pH 9. The equivalence point is still well defined, but the pH might be slightly lower than 7. In the next example, we have a strong base being added to a weak acid. The pH starts around 5 and then rises to a pH 14 with an excess of strong base. The equivalence point is well defined and has a pH of slightly above 7. This process is the same as what we looked at when we considered the different methods for forming acidic buffers and the gentle curve illustrates how the buffer will maintain its pH upon small additions of acid or base. In the final example where we add a weak base to a weak acid, the pH starts at around 5 and only rises as high as 9 with an excess of weak base present. The equivalence point for this reaction is not well defined and this can present problems in identifying when neutralisation has occurred. The half equivalence point is when the half of the acid present has been neutralised and when adding a strong base to a weak acid the pH of this point is equal to minus log of Ka or the pKa value. It is of course possible to carry out these titrations the other way around where an acid is added to a basic solution. In this case we start with a high pH and then through the course of the addition we end with a lower pH. The pH curve for this process are just the opposite way around. Well that's it for this episode of Bale's Chemistry. We've got loads more videos on acids and bases on the playlist on the screen now. And if you've enjoyed the video make sure you hit the thumbs up below. Thanks for watching. 